Hello viewers, SuperGT here. Welcome back to another video. In this one, we're going to go through why it's probably best that you don't rage quit too often and how there are many things you can learn and achieve by not rage quitting. I've definitely been guilty of um, throwing in the odd rage quit here and there over the years, but this race demonstrated why it's probably best not to do that. Now we start off of course with qualifying, the big old fuel burning session, destroying the polar caps session, burning all that fuel, and it did it for quite a few laps on this one, before eventually coming around the final corner, this is my qualifying lap, you see just how out of control I am with the car, and I found this race to actually be very difficult on the tyres, and you'll see that throughout the course of the video. So I set my lap time there, it was two seconds off the pace, I was quite a long way off, and I really didn't get to grips with the tyre, excuse the pun. So you can see here, starting the race in 18th. So already on the back foot. It's not going to start off well, but the race will get better and better towards the end. But before we see the race, we're going to see the intro. This is all wrong. Ecosystems are collapsing. We are in the beginning of a mass extinction. How dare you pretend that this can be solved with just business as usual and some technical solutions? And come here saying that you are doing enough when the politics and solutions needed are still nowhere in sight. Change is coming whether you like it or not. Thank you. No, no, no. Thank you, Greta, for highlighting the issue with this stupid fuel burning phase in every qualifying session. Thank you, Greta. At least she understands the plight of the typical Gran Turismo sport player having to whack down the brake pedal while burning fuel for every qualifying session. Okay, here we go then. 14 laps of Kyoto starting 18th out of 20 in the Ferrari. So it's a manufacturer's race. And we're going to see how this race progresses and changes throughout the course of it. It's quite a long race. And one of the key things about it is that the fuel, sorry, the, the tyres really do play quite a big uh, factor. As you'll see. I go into the pits four times and that is actually quite normal for this race because uh, pretty much everyone's going into the pits that many times. It's quite a short pit lane here at Kyoto, you don't lose too much time, but because of the tyres and how high the tyre wear factor is, then it's kind of necessary to do that. Also this tyre, uh, sorry, this track is pretty harsh on the tyres, given that you've got lots of long sweeping corners uh, and it's a very long lap as well. So this lap, the first lap, it always tries to settle, you're always trying to settle down into the race. It normally is fairly settled as you always have the big gaps with the rolling starts. We gained a position past Bobby here, then he gained it back on me. Uh, we've got a yellow flag. So, of course, trying to always take advantage of people spinning around. Then we have a Lamborghini facing the wrong way. So, we gain a position there. And so, as we can see here, we're starting at the back, 18th out of 20. We're already 11 seconds away from the lead, or 12 seconds now away from the lead. And that kind of highlights the importance of qualifying. As of this rolling start, again, the, the pack really does spread out very quickly. So, R. Clark in the uh, BMW Z4 going in for a pit stop at the end of lap one. Someone coming out of the pit lane there. Now, you might notice, bottom left of the screen, I have medium tyres on the front and hard tyres on the back. This this race was quite strange in the fact that you had to use all three compounds in the race. So you use uh, soft, medium and hard. I'm, tr I'm trying to get rid of the medium and the hard by putting them both on. You can actually get rid of, um, you can actually use both at the same time. So I'm using medium and hard for this first stint here. And therefore I can just use soft tyres, the best tyres for the rest of the race. So that's part of the strategy there. And then lap two, this is where I had the first signs of just being an idiot. And coming into here went really wide. The car, similar to qualifying, really just out of control. And pulling for a nice 360 nose scope for no reason. From that we lost maybe four or five seconds just from that spin. 
and it puts us down to 19th with 20th and last right behind us. So I'm going to jump into the pit lane here for the first stop. At the end of lap two, it's very early I know, but given the high tyre wear, kind of necessary. So first pit lane done, uh, first pit stop done, and we leave the pit lane in 19th. So our clock actually came in again, uh, quite unusual, but he did. At the end of lap five, so a couple of laps later, still in 18th, uh, not much to report really. You see last place is quite close behind. So we come in for our second pit stop. So it's just three, three laps per stop now until the end of the race. End of lap five, end of lap eight, end of lap 11. 20th place, there we are. I'm in dead last, 24 seconds off the lead. Things couldn't really be going any worse. But we'll see from here that things definitely do get better. We'll skip forward a lap there. So on lap seven, at the end of this lap, we'll be halfway into the race. Still in last, but we have some competition in front of us. Now, the good thing about the Ferrari is the fuel saving. It is a very good car for saving fuel. And I can short shift a little bit here and I don't have to actually refuel during the course of the race. So a lot of other people in other cars which use more fuel, they're gonna to have to really heavily fuel save or not bother really fuel saving too much and then just refuel in the pit stop. Either way, they're gonna lose time compared to this Ferrari. I'm gonna try and get the car back here on the Lamborghini, also on the BMW. It gives me the space on the outside, so we just go around the outside instead, up into 19th place. So, not last. Always good to not be last. But I suppose the only time that your position matters is when you cross the finish line. So things aren't over yet, we've got a long way to go. Up behind Jack in the Lamborghini, so an all Italian manufacturer battle here in the Japanese circuit. So I've got the run here, but he just blocks the inside, fair enough. So there's no way through on the right hand side. So I'm going to go to the outside and try to maybe cut back on the way out. Not quite. So I'm just scanning ahead, always looking at the map, seeing where people are. But the main thing I think about these long races that I've noticed, especially given that these FIA races are a lot longer now, is that you have to be very patient. These races can last easily over 20 minutes. I mean, it's already been 16 minutes long and we're not even halfway, so it's gonna be a half an hour race. And therefore you need patience. You need the race to come back to you and um, just play to your strategy. I'm going for the fuel saving strategy so I don't have to refuel and then you see my tyre uh, choice at the start, I went with the hard and the medium. So I was going to, always going to be slow at the start of the race, and then I was always going to get quicker as the race went on. I was considering rage quitting after that spin. I was pretty much at the back of the pack. It really didn't look good at all. But there's always something you can learn by continuing the race. You can treat it as a practice session, a live practice session against live opponents. It's always good to carry on. Even if you're near the back of the pack, you can always learn something, you can always pick something up. And uh, at this point here, lap 8, so we're going to be coming into the pit lane at the end of this lap as we go up into 15th past the Jaguar. So we're going to sweep to the left hand side here at the end of the lap and put on another set of softs, don't have to refuel as we've mentioned, and then leave in the pit lane. So it might seem really weird, we've done three stops already. This isn't me just pulling off a Ferrari strategy for no reason for the lols. It actually will work eventually. So 17th now, 30 seconds off the lead. Still not looking all that great if we're honest, but we have two stints to go. End of lap nine there, beginning of 10. And we're gonna run for the entirety of this lap and just see how it goes and see how we're driving. So not really fuel saving too much, just a little bit. So just as the rev gauge goes past halfway, we're kind of shifting about there and not really revving the car all the way out. So in terms of the fuel, uh, just monitoring that every now and then, it's quite hard to divide 100 by 14. Let me whip my calculator out. 100 divided by 14 equals six. Uh, sorry, 7.14. So you've got 7% or just over 7% of fuel to play with every lap. So you can, just basically monitoring that. Of course, after the seventh lap, it should be on 50%. That's halfway into the race. Um, but yeah, just trying to keep on top of the fuel amount. Um, whilst managing the tyres and I think a lot of the time with these long races it's not really a case of trying to race people too much as weird as that sounds because it's a race 
But the main thing is just try to stick to your strategy and pull it off and execute your strategy. And if you can just be smooth, persistent, not making many mistakes and hopefully not get into too many battles, then if your strategy is a good strategy, then you'll probably do quite well in the race. So into the hairpin. Quite a difficult uh, hairpin this as it has a little bump on the on the early apex and it can really unsettle the car. Pulling away from Jack, so this has been a good lap so far. Our fastest lap to this point is a 217.8, which is more than two seconds off of the fastest lap. Set by Surf and Secker in where is he? He's in second place at the moment. They're on the main straight already. And uh, actually Surf and Secker uh, Surf and Secker goes into the lead. So coming down through here into the chicane. I was really struggling through there so I just kind of adapted my line a little bit and the way I was driving it. I was pushing a little bit too much earlier on in the race especially with the medium and hard tyres which is really difficult to drive on let me tell you when you've got harder tyres on the front or the back it's quite difficult to deal with. A couple of people jumping into the pit lane so we're going to go up a couple more positions. You see people leaving the pit lane up ahead as well. Setting a 216.3 so within a second of the fastest lap so that's a lot better. Progress is being made. We're adapting our driving style the strategy is slowly coming to us and we're getting closer to the lead in fact 22 seconds behind the leader now exiting the pit lane is to be quite close one jack just ahead the corvette just around the outside by i can just about keep the inside line here and just retake the position i'm on the fresh tires so things like that really do help because if you're on fresh tires you're probably going to be quicker than the person who's just going past you uh, past the pit lane so if you get stuck behind them you're just going to cost yourself time so luckily there i could just get ahead of him and i don't lose too much time that way so lap number 12 we've got less than three laps to go sitting in 14th we started 18th but there's still progress to be made here as we go over the crest here of the hill um we're going to skip ahead because not much else happened on that lap so less than two laps to go now lap 13 we're in 14th place what can we do from here? As we just pan out, we see a, a wider shot. It's not like we can see too many cars in the near future in front of us, in the near uh, distance. But such is the way that the strategy works with this. Um, you never know what tyres people are on. So I'm on the soft tyre. The people who are around the corner in front of us might be on the hard. Therefore, they're going to be a couple of seconds off per lap. And just as we come past here, you can see a nice group. There's a group of three cars, so with probably at least four minutes of racing remaining, we could still um, conceivably catch up with them. Um, I do have Jacques in front of us here in the Lamborghini, so it's kind of a weird one. We've been equal pace throughout this entire race, myself and Jacques. We've been battling throughout the, the majority of the race, so we don't really want to fight too much because I think we could work together and try to catch up with that group of three in front. I do go for a move here and it's probably in hindsight not the best place to have tried. It might have been an idea just to stay behind for now. As um, uh, just looking at the gap to the leader, 19 now, 19 seconds behind the lead. So I'm actually gaining on the leader. Uh, so the strategy wasn't very good at the start. It was always gonna, I was always gonna lose time with that hard and medium tire on the first stint, plus the spin. Um, plus just not being overtly familiar with the car and the track, it didn't do enough practice, should have done more really. But then eventually as we got more used to the car and the track and the strategy came towards us with the soft tyres, then we started moving forwards. And we're definitely gaining on that group ahead, which is good news. Coming round the second to last corner, up towards the final one, they are battling, just scanning ahead. They're definitely fighting up there and they're losing time all the time. Let's come through the final corner for the second to last time. Now I was quite surprised by this, but Jacques is gonna peel off to the left and go into the pit lane. He had 9% fuel left, decided he wanted to do another pit stop. Okay, I'll quite happily take the position. Up into 13th, on the final lap, with positions potentially to be gained here. The gap, less than two seconds, a creaser goes onto the grass, gets shoved wide, I think. So our fastest lap of the race so far, 215.9 within the same second as the leader of the race, who set a 215.1. Coming over the crest here, the Corvette quite slow in the slipstream. We're gonna easily go past here. So you never know at this late stage of the race, are people on harder tires? Are they fuel saving? Um, which would make them, of course, a lot slower. At the moment, I don't have to fuel save the Ferrari. 
good on fuel, I'm okay for fuel, I can kind of rev the car out as much as I like now, and I'm on the softer tyres. So at this point here, I'm actually in quite a good position in terms of how the car feels and how much I can rev it out. So I'm pretty much on the front foot now. At the, front, at the start of the race, definitely on the back foot. I was going backwards, it was awful, it was shocking. I could have easily quit and rage quit and uh, you know, slammed my controller or slammed my wheel into the ground. Kind of disassemble, that's a bit harder, isn't it? It's easy to throw a controller, but you can't really disassemble your whole wheel and sim rig and then throw it on the ground. Kind of a bit more difficult. But um, you get the idea. Up into 11th place, and uh, this is going rather well. So this kind of just highlights really that often it's very easy just to, it's very tempting just to rage quit and be annoyed because after that spin on lap two, I was right down the back of the pack. It was looking awful, but I've learned a lot actually by staying into this race, staying in this race and letting the race come back to me. Also with his FIA races, it's, it's well worth staying in because especially if you're doing the first race, because you learn a lot for the second race. So you know, you understand the strategy, you, you understand what you did wrong, and then you can perfect it for the second race round, and you get even better. So into the final corner of the race, we're gonna get a yellow flag here. So someone spun out through this final turn, and you see this car just facing the wrong way, behind the Jaguar, and eventually, we're gonna go up to 10th place as a result of that, and cross the line to finish in the top 10, which was absolutely incredible when you see how bad the race started. We finished only eight seconds away from third and you think without that spin and maybe a slightly better qualifying place, third place was actually definitely conceivable in that race. So it's a good job that I practiced, I did that race, I know what I, I know what to do now for the next one and um, well that's it everyone, thank you so much for watching. Just my quick thoughts on maybe why it's best not to rage quit, you should continue, you can learn a lot. That is all from me. Thank you so much for watching. I do hope you enjoyed it. Have a nice day and I shall see you next time. Goodbye.